Action Comics Superman. All right, back to Philip Kennedy Johnson and his stories about father-son relationships. Bef- before we get into it, though, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Just to let everybody know, on the show, oh, and yeah. anyone that's watching this on YouTube, mm-hmm. Nate and I have made a, an executive decision, a.k.a. we want more content for the, the channel. We are yeah. going to start adding more DC books to the show. So anybody that is is just... You know, look at this. Next book after this is going to be Detective Comics. Next book after that is going to be Teen Titans. Next book after that is going to be Harley Quinn. We're picking up Batman. We're picking up uh, Superman. We are committing to DC books. Nightwing, Justice League. We're going to do it all, baby. We are... uh, we're, we're jumping into DC and we're super excited and I think obviously Ron is super excited at the store because that means we're spending more monies um, but no I you know you're going to tell me about this book but I can just tell you right now folks our, our fat man our two fat guys uh, army whatever you want to call yourselves all you fatties out there that watch our show we want to let you know that we're, we're, we're bringing in the DC more than just one or two books it. we're going in on it and we're going to have more reviews of these books. And we're super excited about it because I can tell you right now, we're really liking what we're reading. So, well, And I do want to say one thing, too. Yeah. Um, wh- one of the things that I think is kind of an, uh, one of our sticks, but especially so with DC, is that we are fairly new comic readers. Mm-hmm. Uh, James has a little bit more, you know, experience than I do. But like, I literally did not read my buy my first comic book. Uh, besides my Coed and Cambria comics, which I bought because I was a fan of the band. Besides yep. those, I didn't buy my first comic until I was 28 years old. So uh, I just, one of the things I think we offer is just comics through a new lens. Sometimes we have background information, but a lot of times we can only offer you um, what the comic is giving, right? So if, right. There's the, if, the, if a comic just solely relies on its 80 year history to make it good, but its writing isn't actually good, it's probably not going to be very good to us because we're not going to get it. <laughs> That's even more so with our DC books. Mm-hmm. So there are going to be some times that we say things that are maybe like, you're like, oh, guys, you guys don't know that? That's like total obvious continuity. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't know that. We, we don't. Um, so a lot of these stories are really going to make or break based off of how good the actual story is versus, you know, oh, is this a fan service to previous uh, storylines or mm-hmm. things from comics? So we don't right. Have it. Yep. Yep. Totally. So, I totally agree with that statement. That being said, I had a really good time reading this uh, Action Comics Superman book. Hey. So this was the second part of the what I think is just a two part um, arc between Superman and Action Comics. Um, Johnson is writing both books, but I'm not sure that they're going to jump back and forth every single time. Yeah. Uh, but this one they are. So we pick back up where we left off with. Um, Superman essentially finding out that the people on this space station were the ones creating the rift and purposefully not closing it at first, essentially so they could study the effects that the rift and that these aliens were having on Superman. Gotcha. Um, Because while Jonathan was basically invulnerable to these, like you would expect, um, Superman's kind of getting his ass kicked. Um, at one point, he's got like a... It kind of looks like a chunk kind of torn out of his cheek, and he's like bleeding throughout the whole issue. Um, oh, no. Yeah. And in this issue, we get a lot of internal dialogue from Clark uh, about how um, there's this golden age, and that's the name of this arc. Uh, there's this golden age when your child thinks that you are infallible. Or you're Superman, which I think is funny because <laughs> yeah. in this case, he literally is. Right. Um, and he's like, you know, there's then there's always going to come a time when your child realizes that you're, you're not unbreakable, that, you know, you, you have fault. You, you do have fault and that things can happen to you. And, uh, you know, sometimes those things can be frightening or those can be um, worrisome. Mm-hmm. And so while you do get a lot of really... F- cool action scenes of you know them just kind of punching and and laser beaming some aliens um you also see this internal dialogue from superman and you also get uh sort of these heroics from jonathan he realizes that they they basically come to realize that the only way that this can be uh this rift in space can be fully sealed is if it's sealed from the inside Uh. and at first 
Clark is like, well, I gotta go in. And they've got this big <laughs> laser beam they pulled off the the space station. And he's like, I guess I'm gonna go in and we'll see if I can find my way back to Earth. Oh shit. And you know, this is this is a pathway to another dimension. He doesn't even know where it is. He's just like, Oh, we'll see if I can get back. <laughs> and Jonathan's like, Yeah, fuck that. And so he takes the laser from his dad, goes through the portal, points it at the break and shoots it and then flies faster than the laser beam oh shit and bursts out the side back into earth or bur- back into space mm-hmm. just as it hits the rift and seals it back holy good. shit that's cool uh, it was yeah it was it was pretty cool little uh, event um and then clark and and um jonathan just land back down on earth and Clark literally tells him a story about uh, this time that he sees, I don't remember what his adopted dad's name is, but um, he said, you know, there's a time when, uh, you know, he fell off of a ladder and kind of hurt himself. And I was trying to make excuses. Oh, well, the wind was blowing and oh, like, oops, like that ladder was rickety because uh, I you know, didn't tighten the screws on it. Like Clark was trying to, you know, this is teenage Clark and he's trying to find any reason why uh, he could make up for his dad, not being embarrassed that he fell. And his dad was literally like, Nope, I'm a human too. And I make mistakes and I'm susceptible to falling and getting hurt just like anyone else is. Like I'm not just this infallible being that's going to be around forever. Right. And you know, Jonathan clearly more than other people is struggling with this because he has seen in the future that his dad is going to die and it was supposed to be around this time mm-hmm. um and yeah so they have a really good conversation that's pretty much the end of their two story we get a couple of pages at the end of um some villains um <laughs> one is a guy with like a weird body that kind of looks similar to cosmic ghost rider mm. uh, his head is actually a vat with a baby inside of it show um, it like an infant oh whoa yeah, it's weird. Um, so I don't know if like the and it's the speech bubbles are coming out of the infant's mouth. Yeah. So I don't know. And then there's this guy as well. Um, I oh, that's that's uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's a char- That's a current character. That's an old school character. I don't know who it is, but like he, I think he's like the leader of Murder World or something like that. Like it's a okay. tournament world. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with him in the slightest bit, but um, you know that's where we're going with the story next. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm interested to find out. Is it continuing with with the son, or is it with Superman? Uh, I believe it's with Superman. It doesn't okay. say, um, so I'm not sure. I actually th- I think one book is going to follow one more than the other uh, as they go, yeah. but. I'm really not sure, you know, exactly what all this is going to do. Because this was just a, a, you know, my first intro. These are the first Superman comics I've ever read. So, um, you know, as far as stories go, these were great stories. Mm -hmm. Um, They just happened to be Superman characters, but they could have been anyone. That could have been a Batman and a Robin. That could have been a Mr. Fantastic and uh, Franklin Richards. Like, it would have had the same effect. Right. Um, Well, that's good. Good story. That's like what you said before, like when we started this segment was these stories for us are going to be more based on who's writing them and how well, which really is, <laughs> can be applied to Marvel too, but we just have a little bit more of a connection with Marvel because we know those characters better. Right. So, you know, the, the writing for these books are going to have a much more uh, harsher implication to whether we're going to like them or not, because the writing's not there. We're just going to be like, uh, duh, why are we doing this? Um, you know, and we're going to say that about the next book. So, 